Google Calendar is probably the most used calendar app today, thanks to the user base of Gmail. With over 2 billion active users worldwide, Google Calendar has become an essential productivity tool for individuals and businesses alike. Google Calendar was launched in April 2006 as part of Google's expanding suite of productivity applications. Initially, it offered basic scheduling capabilities, but has since evolved into a comprehensive time management platform. And with the Google Calendar MCP server, we can enable Claude desktop or client applications that support MCP to interact with your Google Calendar account. This allows you to streamline or automate your scheduling workflow, create and modify events, set up recurring meetings, and even analyze your time allocation patterns. In this video, we will build a Google Calendar MCP server using Python, which can be used with Cloud Desktop, VS Code, and other MCP compatible client applications by integrating Google Calendar's API. Before we learn how to develop the Google Calendar MCP server, let me share a few demos so you can see how the MCP server performs in Cloud Desktop. Now let's say I want to create two calendars in my account. Usually I have to manually click on the add icon, manually type the calendar name and description, and click create to create the calendar. And because I want to create two calendars, I need to go through the steps twice. But using the Google Calendar MCP server in Cloud Desktop, here I can simply say create two calendars called movie time and concert events. And here, Cloud will use the appropriate calendar functions to create the two calendars without me going through the hassle. And here are the movie time and concert events calendars created by Cloud. Once I have the two calendars created, I can do a follow-up request, have Cloud to add events to the two calendars. And here are the two calendar events created by Cloud. So sometimes if I need to add a calendar event from a screenshot, I will just paste the screenshot and have Cloud to identify the event detail in the image and create an event. Just another common use case to streamline your Google Calendar workflow. And for the last demo, let's say I want to do a calendar cleanup to delete calendars that meet certain criteria or contain a certain word. For example, for the request, I will say, delete all the calendars that contain the keyword movie and event. In this case, Cloud will first pull all the calendar in my account, check the criteria, and delete the calendar. A very useful MCP tool set if you don't have time or hate manually managing Google calendars. And that's all the intro and demo I'm going to share. Now let's dive into developing the Google Calendar MCP server in Python. All right, the first thing we need to do is to set up the Google Calendar API access. On your browser, navigate to console.cloud.google.com. If you don't have a Google Cloud account, simply create one. It is completely free. And almost all Google Suite APIs like Gmail, Google Calendar, Google Sheets, YouTube, or Google Drive are all free with unlimited usage as well. Before we can start using any Google API service, we need to create a project first. Click the drop down on the top and click New Project. Give the project a name and create the project. Once the Google Cloud project is created, select the project. To enable Google Calendar API access, on the navigation menu, under APIs and Services, select Library. In the search bar, search for Google Calendar API. Click Google Calendar API and enable the API service. To view the usage limit, under Quotas and System Limits. For the Calendar API, you can make 600 query requests per minute, which is far more than you need. Now, there are a few usage limits you need to be aware of. For example, you cannot create more than 60 calendars in a short amount of time, 
or if you create more than 100,000 events during a short amount of time, you will run into a red area for several months. Just keep that in mind. The next step is to set up an OAuth consent screen. On the navigation menu, under APIs and services, select OAuth consent screen. The Google Cloud OAuth consent screen is a prompt that informs users about who's requesting access to their data and what kind of data they are allowing your app to access. Click Get Started. Give the app a name and follow the instructions. For the audience type, choose External. When you create an app, the app will be in development mode until you publish the app publicly. To grant the app permission to users, on the navigation menu, select Audience. In the Test Users, click Add Users and add the user email who will have access to the app. And the last step to set up Google Calendar API access is to create an OAuth client account. On the navigation menu, select Clients. Now on the top, click Create Client. For the application type, select Desktop App. Give the client account a name and create the account. Once the OAuth client is created, Download the client JSON file in your project directory and name it as clientsecret.json. At this point, we are done setting up the Google Calendar API in Google Cloud Console. Let's move on to the Google Calendar MCP server development. To start with the development, launch a terminal and install the MCP and Google Python libraries. In your project directory, create a folder named Tools. Inside the Tools directory, create another folder called Google. This is where I'm going to store all Google Suite related API modules. Now in the Google folder, create three Python files called init.py, googleapis.py, and calendartools.py. Go ahead, open the Google APIs.py file. Inside the Google APIs module, import the Python dependencies and create the create service function, like what I have on the screen here. The create service function here is a helper function I wrote a few years ago that simplifies Google API service creation. Basically, Using this function, we only need to pass an API name, API version, and scopes to create a Google API service object. If we just quickly glance over the source code, basically the function checks if a token session file exists. If yes, then restore the session using the token session file. If not, launch the authentication flow and have the user log in and grant permissions to the app and store the authentication session as a session token file. We then use the build function to create the Google service object. Pretty straightforward. Okay, now let's work on the calendar tools module. In the script, import the required Python dependencies and the create service function. To keep the output organized and easy to read for LLM models, create the data model classes inherited from base model and define the relevant fields. And here's the rest of the data classes. So Google Calendar and Calendar Event Objects returns a lot more fields than what I have here. These are just the attributes I found useful when working with AI models or AI agents. Just an FYI. To keep the tool functions organized, create a class called Calendar Tool. I created nine Google Calendar functions to be used in Cloud Desktop and AI Agents, which I will now go to them one by one. If you have suggestions on what other calendar functions might be useful, please leave your feedback in the comments below. Also, you don't really need to know too much about how the code works. Cloud will handle that actually but you do need to know what each function does. 
In the Calendar Tool class, define the class attributes to connect to the Google Calendar API endpoint. For the init method, we will take the client secret file and call the init service method to create the Google Calendar service object. Here for the scopes, I'm using the calendar scope, which gives Cloud full permission to manage a user's calendar. Now let me paste the rest of the methods. The list calendars method is one of the key functions in the class. It retrieves all calendars from a Google Calendar account. You can retrieve up to 250 items max per request, but giving LLM models have a context limit. I would recommend keeping it under 50 items per call. And use the next page token parameter to fetch more results if available. And here's the code base. I won't cover too much on how the code works, but if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. Moving on, the create calendar method allows you to create a new calendar in your Google account. The method takes a name, which is a required field for the calendar title, and optional parameters like time zone and description. The method is particularly useful when you need to create multiple calendars at once. And here's the rest of the function. For the output, we will return a calendar object with the ID, name, time zone, and description. The delete calendar method, as you might expect, removes a calendar by its ID. The search calendar method is another powerful tool that helps you find calendars by name. You can specify whether the search should be case sensitive, limit the results, and handle pagination. And here's the rest of the function. And the function returns as a calendars object with the calendar count, calendars list, and next page token. The list calendar events method retrieves events from a specific calendar. The default calendar ID is set to primary, meaning your main calendar. We can filter events by time range using time min and time max, which default to a week before and after the current day if not specified. And here's the rest of the function. For the output, the function returns as a calendar events object with event count, events list, and next page token if more results are available. The search calendar event method searches events giving a calendar ID. And here's the rest of the function. The add calendar event method is probably the most frequently used function, which lets you create events in your calendar. And here's the rest of the function. The delete calendar event method removes an event by its ID from a specific calendar. This is useful for cleaning up unwanted events or events that are no longer relevant. And the last method, update calendar event, modifies an existing event's detail. At this point, we are done with the calendar tools module. Now open the init.py file. In the init module, Type the import statement like what I have shown on the screen. What the import statement does is it eliminates the need to type the calendar tools module name when we import the calendar tool class. Now the last step is to set up the Google Calendar MCP server. In your project directory, create a Python file named 
mcpcalendar.py. In the script, import the required Python dependencies and construct the fast MCP objects with the required Python libraries specified. Then insert an if statement to ensure the calendar object and function are created only when executed by the cloud desktop or client application. Now at this point, we are officially done developing the Google Calendar MCP server. To add the MCP server to cloud desktop, on your terminal, run the command mcp install, followed by the file name mcpcalendar.py. Now restart your cloud desktop application. When cloud desktop launches, it will prompt you to log in and ask for the required permission to access the app. Once you complete the authentication, you should see the message. The authentication flow has completed. You may close this window. Now let me open my Google Calendar to test the Calendar MCP server. In my cloud desktop, I will give it a task to create an event, dinner with friends, for tomorrow, the 7 p.m. on my main calendar. So today is April 19th, and I can see an event got added for April 20th at 7 p.m. Just one more test. I will ask Claude to list my calendar events for the next seven days. And it has successfully retrieved my calendar events for the next seven days, despite the first function called fail. And that concludes this Google Calendar MCP server development for Cloud Desktop tutorial. I hope you find the video useful. If you're a Patreon member, you can download the source code from the link in the description below. And if there are any tutorial ideas you have in mind and you'd like me to cover, please leave them in the comments below. Also, don't forget to like the video and subscribe. Happy coding. See you in the next one.